The penultimate round of Thundersport GB Championships for 2017 brings us to Alton. And it's now time for the A&R Racing Pre National Sport 600. Um, brought to you also by Continental. And there is Lee McLaughlin, number 24. Now, this championship has already been wrapped up by Zach Ultram. Um, he isn't racing in this. He doesn't need to. It's all done. But second place in the pre-national sport is wide open coming into this. There's also the matter of the freshman PNS 600 championship to be wrapped up as well. Lee McLaughlin, number 24, lead that and could wrap it up today. Ooh, that was a bit edgy off the line as they make their way uh, down towards turn number one. That was number 85. Um, and I rather fancy Neil Goodson, who was on pole position, might find himself with a penalty in a moment. We'll find out on the timing screens in just a moment as we head downhill. There are 40 uh, 600s on the grid for this race. The pre-national 600 grid just continues to grow. And there's Alan Brooks, number 19119. He is one of, what, five riders that could actually still get second place in the championship. Uh, currently coming into this weekend, second place belongs to Paul McDonald, but Paul isn't here. Um, and so it, that means that the door is open. There's two races coming up, they're double points as well. So Paul McDonald, sadly, uh, was probably wincing whilst watching this because uh, with there being so many riders that could take second place away from him, he's probably going to end up out of the top three overall by the end of play today. Uh, around Britain she came we go and up and over the top. Zach Holtram then already champion, but now it's these guys we focus on and lo and behold, surprise, surprise, not just Neil Goodson who was on pole getting a 10 second jump start penalty, but also the same prize <laughs> for Tom Hill. Yeah, number eight jump start penalties. There he is, you're just looking at him, white bike uh, number eight with the yellow leathers. So those boys will have a 10 second penalty. I would imagine, I didn't see Tom Hill's jump start, but I would imagine Neil Goodson is pretty aware that he jumped the start. Yeah, he did roll over, didn't he? I'm board here with Nigel Pitt, number 113. He's out there on his uh, Apadme Racing Triumph. But Somebody I did just want to point out to you, lovely to see him out here on uh, on R6, is young Freddie Crane. Yeah, he was out in Anglesey as well. Mm. Um, nice young lad, nice, nice family actually, come over from uh, the Isle of Man. Indeed. And, uh, out there on that jugger racing Yamaha. He's sporting the number 18. So, yeah, keep an eye out for Freddie. He could play a big part in trying to get on the podium here. Despite There he is, in fact, in second place, despite the fact that uh, he won't play a part in terms of the championship. Uh, Will Harper's up there as well, number 11, another rider who's uh, in the hunt for second in the championship. He was third coming into this weekend, one point clear of Liam Warren as uh, we just see there Neil Goodson dropping back a place or two. Number 64 coming through is Pete Vitchies. Well, we've spoken plenty about him uh, over the last couple of rounds since Rockingham, really, where he came alive. Now, Pete Vitchies is up to second place now. He's got a very good chance of still finishing in the top two of the championship. And, of course, he is currently second in the freshman as well. I oh, know, I just thought that Freddie did really well to qualify in seventh place. That's all. I mean... Uh, you know, because he obviously hasn't been on a 600 for that long, has he? No. No, I, th um, I agree with that. Here is uh, Alan Brooks just up ahead of uh, Sam Ho there, number 300 on his UK race homes Honda. He's come on strong this year, hasn't he, Sam? He's getting there, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. Yeah, um, his name seems to be featuring uh, higher and higher up on yeah. result sheets, I've noticed. So it's uh, good news for him. I think he'll probably stay in this class next year, but obviously he'll be in the uh, sport championship, you know. He'll be, he should be able to stay, I would imagine. I don't think he'll have to move up there to Sportsman Elite, you know. Will Harper is going through there on the MSG Racing Suzuki. Always easy to spot them, the blue and red machines. And then a bundle here. There's AJ McDaniel in there. And uh, number 97 is Lawrence Edgley. He's out there on a Yamaha and someone's gone down lost a rider there that I'm not sure who that is actually are we going to get a picture of the bike here we are 107 it's Matthew Ashcroft he's gone down on his Spears Motorsport Suzuki he's speared himself into the grass down at Lodge Corner so it is uh, Lee McLaughlin that leads on his Yamaha number 24 flying away at the rider from Leeds 
a couple of decent results here today and he'll wrap up that uh, freshman championship. Lee McLaughlin coming into this is eighth overall in the, uh, the actual sport championship. But like I say, the, the form of McLaughlin and Richie's means that they've both been steadily climbing the standings and both could actually still finish in the top three overall of the PNS 600 championship if they continue their form here and then into Donington as well. Yeah, actually, I, I want to do a big shout out to, because of Lee McLaughlin to uh, MSG Racing. As you know, they field quite a bunch of fellas out there uh, in um, we, what is quite strange at the moment in 600s because they field Suzuki's because I think they're a Suzuki dealership. But uh, um, what happened at Anglesey? I was talking to Phil Beckworth, who's uh, Dave Brooks' mechanic, but he's been helping Lee McLaughlin and. Uh, he uh, had an off, a guy had an off in front of him and stuck stones through his radiator and he had like a hole in his radiator about the size of a two pence piece. Well, because he's running a, he was running a, his old GSX-R at the time, uh, you know, it was just like awkward to get any bits. But they went along to MSG and MSG, despite the fact that uh, obviously Lee is up against their bikes, uh, they lent him a radiator. Um, then they watched his progress and everything else. At the end of the meeting, when they went to hand the radiator back, uh, the guys at MSG said, no, I'll tell you what, we're that impressed with how you're doing, you can keep the radiator. And I thought that's like typical Thundersport GB sporting ethos. So, well done, MSG. Um, it saved, um, well, I mean, he would have had to go home. He, he just couldn't get a radiator, uh, couldn't Lee. Well, yeah, it's brilliant sportsmanship, I mean, it especially given the fact that Will Harper, their, exactly. their rider there, number 11, could potentially lose out yeah. on a top three place in the championship to yeah. Lee McLaughlin yeah, yeah. as well. So it's brilliant sportsmanship there um, as this race rages on. Well, we get that throughout the paddock, Steve. I, I'm delighted to say that that is how the Thundersport GB paddock is, you know. It's like elbows out when you're in the race, etc., etc. But, you know, when it comes to helping each other and, you know, b being friendly in the paddock, the second to none. There is number three, Sean uh, Bailiff. Just up ahead of number 38, Jeremy Watson and Lawrence Edgley. He's out there on a... He's obviously been racing in the super teams on a Yamaha 300. He's got a beautiful, brand spanking new R6 there. That's the new R6. They are gorgeous machines. And uh, he's trying his luck out at the 600s. He's not bad, actually. He's well up inside the points. Yeah. Well done. Well, we were wondering where he was, weren't we? When well, we were commentating on the Super, <laughs> Super Teams. teams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we know now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, at the sharp end, these guys are battling for third. Neil Goodson at the front of this pack, of course, is going to get a 10-second penalty. So, he'll have to find a bit of time if he wants to stay there. So, that means Alan Brooks there, number 119, would inherit third. Will Harper, number 11, would inherit fourth. Sam Ho would move up into fifth place. Um, Freddie Crane, sorry, is up ahead of these guys as well. So it's actually fourth these guys are all fighting for. There is Lee McLaughlin then, your race leader. A win here and 50 points would all but seal the deal. Mathematically speaking, it would still go to this afternoon's race, but it would probably do the deal for him in terms of the pre-national 600 freshman. Through the chicane we go. No Zach Ultram, of course, the North number 47 champion. Doesn't need to bother any more with this. McLaughlin really is flying. Pete Ritchie's is uh, at the moment challenging Freddie Crane for second. Here is uh, a bit further back, 52 and 58. Sam Mosley and Liam Warren. Liam Warren, of course, fourth in the championship coming into this event. Probably would want to be a, a bit more in contention than he has been here today. But it is worth pointing out to people who don't understand. I mean, look, Lee McLaughlin and Pete Ritchie's, for example, uh, are both freshman riders. Yeah. You know, that means that they're new this year, more or less. And, uh, you know, to give you an idea, how well, I mean, they are, like, in front of a lot of, the, a lot of the sport riders. And just look at that lap time, Steve. Lee McLaughlin's done a 146 dead, and the freshman... That is 
over three and a half seconds quicker than the freshman lap record. Yeah. Three and a half seconds. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> it is an age in this in this game, isn't it? it certainly is. <laughs> There, Jeremy Evans up ahead of AJ McDaniel, who could still technically finish in the top three of the freshman championship himself. The Texan will be hoping that he can pull that off, I'm sure. Now on board with Sam Mosley, number 52. Yeah, he had the old Texan AJ years to go home this Christmas and uh, not coming back, unfortunately. They are, you know, the old US. I have for uh, keeping him at home. Oh, okay. Well, what happens if he finishes in the top three of the championship? Will he turn up at the presentation? Um, I think yeah, he'll fly over for that. You know what these Texans are like. Not going to miss out on a party. Oh, dear. Who's that gone straight on? That's not the race leader, is it? No, it can't be. There's Alan Brooks. Me and Sid are too busy talking about Texas here. Um, well, he's in the USA. He'll just nick one of the planes and fly oh, over, true, there is that. Mentioned earlier that King, uh, Sam Ho here was on a Honda. It's what it says in the program and on the race result sheet, but you can quite clearly see that that is no Honda. He's out there on a Yamaha. And uh, Sam Ho resides in Nantwich, so he hasn't got far to go home uh, later. No. In fact, I should imagine he nips over a cup of tea. Over the finish line we go there. And here is Goodson, who is going to take a 10-second penalty, remember. Will Harper just up behind him, number 11. The two freshman riders still out at the sharp end. Here's Sam Mosley. Mosley at the moment, just fighting it out for a top 10 finish. He's getting a bit out of shape there up the inside of Liam Warren. He's come on well, hasn't he? Mosley, Sam Mosley's like they really, really well. Some odd lines coming up through Deer's Leap though. We're on board with him here. He's just lost a place again to Liam Warren into Old Hall Corner. 23 is uh, Andrew Evans. And here is your race leader then. Coming through to lap for one or two riders, McLaughlin. The battle for second. Pete Ritchie's is now ahead of Freddie Crane. So Pete Ritchie's then up into second place. Now, second place for Ritchie's here would move him two points behind McDonald and up to third in the championship. Came into this weekend in fifth. Glocklin now really backs it into his ease. Here's Alan Brooks. Looks like he's on for a top five. Has that just gone straight through? Catch that, Sid. I was looking down at my uh, paperwork, unfortunately. Molesley again, 52. Stop ahead, 23 and 89. Well, I say Andrew again, I'm, I'm impressed Bale. with uh, I'm impressed with Freddie Crane. I have to say, I mean, like up there in the top three. Um, I mean, I know he's just been taken by Pete Richards, but uh, I'm I'm really impressed with that. I've got to say. Yeah, it's nice to see. He's a, he's a lovely lad and he's obviously getting stronger. I mean, if he was to contest at this for a full season next year, he'd be an immediate championship contender, wouldn't he? He would. Yes, he would. Lee McLaughlin sees the last lap flag then. He's been unstoppable, really, since the, the, the lights went out. Neil Goodson got a bit of a jump start, but McLaughlin was straight to the front and nobody's been able to come near him. He's got about a four and a half, five second lead over Pete Ritchie's and Freddie Crane at present group of riders here for these lads to try and lap their way through. There's Neil Goodson up ahead of Harper, but Harper, of course, will move ahead of him because of the penalty that's coming. As things stand, with the checkered flag going out, there will be, in the battle for second place in the PNS 600 Championship, there will be five riders split by 28 points. Blimey. So there's going to be three riders out of those five who are going to be rather disappointed at the end of this season to have made it into the top three. Glocklin puts uh, a lap on number 91, Ian Norris. So he's a big lad. He is built like a brick dunny, isn't he? <laughs> I'll leave with Glocklin. Huh? Well, he's wrestling his he Yamaha get, I mean, round. That's it, that's my ease. point. I mean, not an ounce of bat on him, but... It, you know, he's a big fella, isn't he? Like, big broad shoulders, he can certainly... Yeah, he makes the R6 look very small, I have to yeah. say, but he's completely under, got it under control. Uh, and that's it. Around the final corner, Lee McLaughlin, number 24, 
any points really in another result like this in race two and it will be championship zone up in the freshman checkered flag out McLaughlin is your race winner fantastic stuff that is uh, Andrew uh, Nigel Pitt's sponsor I am led to believe that is waving the uh, checkered flag there from a pad me app design company so uh, glad to see that Lee McLaughlin the winner from Pete Ritchie's Freddie Crane third Will Harper fourth Alan Brooks fifth and Sam Ho in sixth place and on the podium there, you can see Freddie Crane was the top sportsman rider ahead of Will Harper and uh, Brooks. And then in the freshman, Lee McLaughlin, Pete Ritchies and Christian Spears. That's it then for race one. Championship could be sewn up by this man in the freshman class in race two in a sec. Continental, get the grip. GB Racing, world class motorcycle protection. Time for race two in the pre national sport 600s. Lining up on pole, Neil Goodson will certainly wait for the lights this time. Second place is the man to look out for, though, number 24. Lee McLaughlin, race winner from earlier, and another result like that, and it will be in the bag for him. He will become the freshman champion. Third on the grid, Sam Ho. He's looking for uh, another decent result, trying to get himself closer to the top five. There is a gap on the grid. Freddie Crane, who was in the top three earlier, isn't here. Uh, I don't know why. The only thing uh, me and Sid can think is that, because of course he hails from the Isle of Man, that they've had to leave early to go and get the boat, but. He's not out racing in this one, so there's an opportunity for someone else to stand themselves on the podium. As I said before, 28 points between five riders in the fight for second overall as well. And we're on board with Lee McLaughlin. Here is Sam Mosley. He's got a good start as well up inside the top eight. Downhill we go on board with uh, Lee McLaughlin as he tries to fight through to the front. Pete Ritchies is up inside the top seven or eight already as well. Alan Brooks trying to make headway, number 63 is starting to make progress Thomas Holmes around Island Bend it's Goodson still from McLaughlin but here comes McLaughlin and this could be it this might be the race winning overtaking manoeuvre right here into Shell Oils as easy as that and I don't think given the form he showed in race one we're going to see anyone being able to challenge that guy uh, away we go good news for Neil Goodson uh, no jump start penalty this time for him so uh, wherever he finishes across the line is wherever he finishes Around Britons. Coming into this race, then the absent Paul McDonald is just three, uh, two points clear of Pete Ritchie's. So Pete Ritchie's in a double points race here. Would only have to finish inside the top 14, and uh, he would inherit second place in the championship going into the final round. But with double points on offer, oh, someone's gone down there. And is that the same rider? It is Matthew Ashcroft. He went down in. The first race has gone down again in race two as well. He's doing well, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Sid, that's not very nice, is it? But it's not been an afternoon to remember, that's for sure. Uh, the Spears Motorsport Suzuki rider has done it again. Number 66 there, just tipping it into Lodge Corner, is Tom Johnson. There's Tom Hill, number eight. No jump start for him this time. In fact, no jump starts anywhere, so that's always good news. On board with Sam Mosley then, number 52. I agree with you, Sid, he has been coming on, slowly finding his feet. He's started off the season scoring regular points, and now he's starting to get regular top tens as well. Mosley there, chucking it in underneath Liam Warren. This could be one of his best results of the year, Mosley. 
Well, he's at the University of Wales studying motorcycle racing. Can't be bad. <laughs> that wasn't an option available to me when I was younger, either. No, he's not. What did he do? <laughs> oh, and he's oh, just made a bit of a hash oh, of shell oils. Don't let me talk about anybody again. All right, since uh, Mike is off. <laughs> so the race leader is already starting to pull out a good second or two second lead. He's already down into his ease. Second place then for Goodson here. Then it's Sam Ho in third. Fourth for Will Harper, number 11. And fifth for Pete Ritchies, another of the freshmen, all in black. It's like the pre-national sport stick. There is number 15. Going into his ease is Joseph Addy. just outside the top 20 at the moment in this race is uh, despite the absence of Freddie Crane we've still got a pretty healthy grid four riders didn't make it onto the grid from race one but there's still 36 of them which I think you can argue is a fairly healthy field over the line we go once more Neil Goodson still in second place ahead of Sam Ho, Will Harper and Pete Ritchie's but there is McLaughlin at the bottom of your screen Sid, it looks like McLaughlin is going to get this freshman championship wrapped up and it's already deserved. I don't know if I dare talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> in case, uh, with now on my, now on my uh, record, he'll end up having to go to Donington. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. He's been, he's been a star lad, hasn't he? He's like come on so strong. What a great rider, you know, uh, unbelievable. He is going to be uh, a name linked with... Uh, with a lot of wins, I think, for the future. And Pete Ritchie's also, he's just at the back of this fight for second, but Ritchie's we've talked a lot about recently. We like his style, Sid, the black bike, number 64. I mean, you'd fancy him, even at this stage, to probably float his way through these guys, at the, the form he's on at the moment. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, I'm not so sure as he's particularly fond of the wet at the moment, but I'm sure that will come. Um, but in the dry, it's... Uh, he certainly takes some beating, doesn't he? I mean, look at that, look. Oof. He's just made up a place there, I thought he was Lovely. going to make two places up, but oh. Block pass made there on Will Harper, who drops down one on his MSG Suzuki. See how he straightened that chicane out, though? That was quite something else, that was. Hey, look Cross at this the here. Goodness me. There's AJ McDaniel. They, I mean, I think that was riders from about 9th to 20th, all in one go. Yeah, there. all in a gaggle. 72. You know, it's funny, because uh, it's really, we haven't even finished this season yet, but do you know, we've already got a commitment of about 160 riders for pre-national 600 for next year. And I was saying to Dave, you know, maybe it would be nice to have two grids, have a freshman grid and a sport grid. Um, but he said no. He said, I, I don't think that that's the right way to go. Because he said, when I, I back in the days when he was running Bemsey and he had rookie championship and they were just rookies he said it was a crash fest yeah it was he i remember the, it well the, he said in the what he said the reason that doesn't happen so much in this is because you've always got more experienced riders to follow and, and learn from and then you actually like now you get a couple who become faster than those experienced riders yeah so he said if we do have two grids he said it will be the same format and they will sort themselves out via qualifying well, and mega laps and some things like that. So, you know, it, it's, it's really good because that would have been an automatic thing for me to do. But Dave's experience from running events like all these years, that's where it all comes in handy, isn't it? Well, it certainly does. I remember the days of the Red Rookie 600s. Uh, we, of course, had a little spell in the Clubman 600s to, yeah. to begin with, which was far more calm, although that was still... Pretty aggressive yeah, at because the time. I, I remember that when they used to call the Super Sport 600s the Axe Murderers, and the uh, the rookies were called the Axe Murderers in waiting. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, there was always a red flag or two waiting for a rookie 600 race back in the day, so I can understand uh, Dave's uh, logic there. But either way, 160 pre-national bikes already on register for next year is brilliant. Yeah, we're, you know we're not into October yet, so I just foresee, you know, as I said. I've said before, um, but I think it was during the uh, Sportsman Elite race. But I mean, you know, with uh, British and World Championship looking like they're going to shun 600s in the very near future, you know, at Thunder Sport GB, we intend to embrace 600s. 
So, hither to us, mm -mm. all yon 600s. And I still love them. I love the sound of 600s. Wow. They're certainly not dying. I mean, they might be taken out gradually by British Championship, but it's not going to be to the same effect of what two strokes were, that's for sure. There's far too many of them about. Well, not to forget that Yamaha are still going to do the 600 anyway. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, if you look at the um, Golden Era Super Sport 600, which is now basically all Yamaha R6s because they were the kind of the latest thing of the age, as it were. Well, would it be the end of the world if uh, six years hence everybody out here was on Yamaha? No, no, not at all. It wouldn't no. be the end of the world it at all. It wouldn't make any difference at all. No. So. Uh, well, I mean, I'm saying that. Having just congr congratulated MSG Racing, I think that would be a nightmare for them. <laughs> wow, look, at the end of the day, there's ways where you can tune them to still be as competitive. And we've seen, I mean, there are 600s at World Supersport level at the moment that are bikes are seven and eight years old. Are they? Yeah, there, right, there's okay. not really a, a, a massive issue at the moment. It's, this race isn't a massive issue for Lee McLaughlin neither. Look at that. He has wow. got the length of uh, Druids all the way into Lodge as a race lead at the moment. Absolutely storming this one. So in control. You're right about his size on the bike. He towers over that Yamaha R6, does Lee McLaughlin. I mean, he's struggling to get tucked in on it. There's a mountain but, of a man on that. But it looks... He looks so effortless. There's Neil Goodson in second. Pete Ritchie's third. Alan Brooks has done well. He's reeled in the field. And now he's up into fourth place, number 119. Uh, they have, in turn, just pulled a bit of a gap then. Back to Sam Ho and Will Harper. I just want to quickly mention Lawrence Edgley. We talked about him earlier. Uh, Sid, I don't know. Here he is, in fact, number 97 on that brand new R6. I don't know how much time Lawrence has spent on a 600, but to be 15th in race one in a field of 40... That and then he's something. now in the top 10 of race two. Wow. Uh, he's a name just to keep an eye what. on in the next couple of Isn't weeks. Isn't it funny how some people make this stretch over? The yellow flag there, Steve. I don't know what that's about. Um, yeah, some of them, uh, some people just make this switch and it just seems to come to them. And, they, you know, the bike suits them, doesn't it? Well... It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's brilliant to see. I always love seeing riders making that well, he's journey. Only, uh, and he, he's less than two seconds a lap off the leader. And the leader is one tasty Herbert. It's because he's like three seconds under the lap record. It certainly is. So these are all important positions here that you're looking at for the championship in terms of second place. There is uh, Lawrence Edgley we talked about. He's just up ahead there of Thomas Holmes. Is Sean Bailiff. Number 23 is Andrew Evans. And number 8, Tom Hill. Of course, unfortunately for Lawrence, because of his activities in super teams, he can't be a freshman. No. Uh, we, but, you know, he is a freshman in a way on the, on the 600. Because, I mean, let's face it, he is a different animal altogether. Um, and if you. Let me see. You see, that would put him at the moment third as a, on the on, on the on the podium as a freshman, wouldn't it? But you just think, with uh, another round of experience on the 600, let's say at Donington, and then going into next year, if he was to stay in this championship, well, what a what a an opportunity it would be for him. And he, would you really be surprised to hear his name inside the top five? This is an interesting one now. Pete Ritchie goes up into second place in this race. Neil Goodson drops to third. Alan Brooks is hungry for a podium here as well. It's going to be around about 24, 25 points be between five riders going into the final round for wow, that uh, second, third place in the pre-national 600. It really is fascinating. I feel so sorry for Paul McDonald, who of course was second coming into this uh, weekend. He isn't going to be able to have a say in that. Yeah. Here no is Lee McLaughlin. Well, you can see what sort of time of day it is anyway. The top left corner on his camera. <laughs> <laughs> Ten past five local time. No wonder Freddie Crane was rushing home to get the the, the boat. <laughs> Here is Will Harper. A few puffs of, uh, a bit of, a bit of flames coming out of the exhaust pipe. They always love to see that. Um, as they're breaking down into his ease, there is. They put a lovely boat together, that MSG team. They look so beautiful all together, don't they? Like in their colours. Um, really are a good team and nice people. There is that new R6 of Lawrence Edgley's. 
That is pretty, isn't it? Lovely looking bike, really is. Here is a slightly older R6, a very rapid rider on it. Last lap flag out. Lee McLaughlin here is going to win this race. He's going to be crowned the champion of uh, the pre-national sport 600 freshman championship and i tell you what he's also going to do is he is going to become one of the riders that can contend for second place in the championship as well he would actually only be having come into this weekend sid in eighth place overall in the pre-national 600 with this win good lord he will only be 23 points behind pete ritchie who is good the second lord you're right so McLaughlin's 100 point haul here today could wow, be absolutely that's incredible. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. So here's Alan Brooks. He's got himself up ahead of Pete Ritchie's. Now that would change things wow. around. Pete Ritchie's then, it would close the entire gap up. Alan Brooks is another one of the riders that's in that mix for second and third in the championship. Fascinating that will be going into the uh, final round. Oh, I've just worked out that uh, not for the first time this year I'm wrong on uh, some maths because there's four races, isn't there, for pre national 600 per weekend? Not three, this isn't Sportsman Elite. So I've crowned Pete, uh, sorry, I've crowned Lee McLaughlin freshman champion and he actually needs Pete Ritchie's to finish in third for that to be the case now. So We'll see how that one works out at the trick flag. Either way, second place in the PNS 600 Championship is wide open. There will be just a handful of points between five, six riders for that. But here he comes around the corner. It will be 100 points for him. Will it be the championship? That all depends on what goes on behind. Checkered flag out. Race win for Lee McLaughlin. Done. Pete Ritchie's was behind Alan Brooks last time we looked. So we wait for them to come across the line in the background. Oh, that was close. And Pete Ritchie's has done it. So that agonisingly means that Lee McLaughlin needs two points from the four races at Donington just to get that wrapped up. So apologies for getting my math wrong there. McLaughlin wins from Pete Ritchie, Alan Brooks, Neil Goodson, Sam Mosley and Will Harper. The top three sportsmen on the podium are Alan Brooks, Neil Goodson and Sam Mosley. Top three freshmen, Lee McLaughlin, the outright race winner, Pete Ritchie and Sean Bailiff. And now we look at the points. So championship done for Zach Ultram, but not a lot in it is there. Pete Ritchie does move up to second. McLaughlin now up to third. Remarkable stuff there in the hunt for second and third overall. And in the freshman then, yeah, he just needed a couple of points. Look, Lee McLaughlin, he's comfortably ahead though of Pete Ritchie. And AJ McDaniel has moved up into third overall in that one. That's it from us. Lovely sunset here at Alton Park. Be sure to join us for the championship finale at Donington next time.